50 Amstrad CPC games reviewed on real hardware in under 10 minutes. Promise. If you're new to Chinivision, this is the channel that reviews games on real hardware and uses, well, real hardware. And today I'm going to look at 50 Amstrad CPC games chosen at semi-random, all in 4K. So turn your display up to 4K and I'm going to review them in under 10 minutes, starting now. Alien 80's Ultimate's follow-up to Night Door, the isometric 3D experience was impressive at the time and it's a better game than its predecessor, but you know what? Head Over Heels by Ocean trumps it in every single respect. Our first budget game is Cave Mania from Atlantis. The original game came out on the Specky by the Shaw Brothers. You collect the eggs and take them back to your cave. Animation on the CPC is a bit poor, but the game's also fun. Mr. Heli, or Mr. Hell if you are Japanese. It's an IVM shoot em up where you buy upgrades a bit like Blood Money. Certainly probably inspired Blood Money. The PC Engine version is the one to own, but the CPC version plays pretty well. Dragon Ninja is a competent ocean arcade conversion. CPC comes out the top of the 8 bits, but ultimately the gameplay is rather repetitive. Nice final bounty fight though. Tomahawk is a helicopter simulator and it's probably Digital Integration's finest hour. CPC version may not run as fast as the Spectrum, but the splash of colour on the CPC enables you to see what's happening on the battlefield below as a war is raged between the blue and the reds. Some may say the Spectrum version of Chase HQ is the best, but they'd be wrong. Go, Mr. Driver. This is one of the CPC's finest games. It's a terrific, colourful and fast-moving conversion that is enormous fun. And frankly, I'd rather play this than the arcade. Classical aerodynamics say the Bumblebee shouldn't be able to fly. Well, the CPC shouldn't be able to do pinball dreams like this. It's a modern and remarkable new conversion for the Amstrad, and it rightly has other 8-bit owners weeping into their hankies. Silkworm's one of the best two-player shoot-em-ups on the system. The dual controls make a mundane game into something just a little bit special if you've got two players. If you like trucking and you like to truck, then Juggernaut is for you. This driving come resource management simulator is an interesting diversion, but sadly there's no beeping when you reverse. Super Stock Car by Mastertronic certainly isn't supercars, but it's one of the last original Mastertronic budget titles. It's a top-down race that provides an interesting diversion for 20 minutes, but you won't be coming back. Clive Sinclair, the man who bought you Jet Set, Willy. It's a super port of the Specky original. Many games have imitated it and few have succeeded. A more appropriate title for crazy cars would be Boring Cars. It's an empty and dull game from Titus. When kids buy games, they think, hmm, I want a game starring Charles Bronson. You've really got to wonder what Gremlin were thinking of when they licensed this ultra-violent Michael Winner-directed film. OK, we're spared the leering nudity, TV movie style direction and butchered soundtrack, but the game isn't even entertainingly bad, unlike the movie. Treasure Island Dizzy is the hardest, but also the best defined Dizzy game. You'll probably need infinite lives because the game only gives you one. And also, remember, don't drop the snorkel underwater. Match Day 2 at the time was the best football game on the CPC, but now it looks a little bit lethargic. If only it had a tad more speed. It has lots of features though, and it's quite good fun in two-player. Glider Rider does what it says on the tin. You glide, you ride. It's a combination of a motorbike and a glider that becomes rather a compelling game. You knock out the enemy bases on an isometric landscape, but you do need to get used to the controls, specifically launching the glider. So in reality, you're going to go play Turok and on the Amiga, which is quite understandable, but this is a colourful and authentic port. Slimmed down from the 16 bits, yes, but nevertheless, it's a good effort. Thunder! 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 Crap. Akari Rose is another great two-player CPC game, but this one works equally well as a single-player game as well. Lush graphics and frantic arcade action make this a top home port to play. The CPC had a competent, if slow, specky port of R-Type, but this new version really makes the machine sing. It's every bit as good as the Mars System version. This game shows what the CPC can do if the coders can be bothered, but remember, you need the new version, not the original. 
UN Squadron was a fairly unremarkable arcade game, but this is a choppy but attractive arcade port on CPC. But oh, if only it had a few more frames of animation. Cause Comic Mayhem as Jack the Nipper in this Sweeney Toddler inspired arcade game. It's extremely British and the humour may be lost outside the UK. Jackal is a cheap Akari Warriors style game with juddering graphics and twitchy controls. Just go play Akari Warriors. Nonimed is probably a title you haven't heard of, but if I said it's a dynamic game, you'll understand what it's all about. Large sprites, but rock hard. Once you get past the impressive visuals, it's a dull wandering around the castle game. A Winter's Tale is the second Garfield game from Edge. The kind of game many would have purchased on the cover alone when they were kids, but I'm glad I didn't. It's a nasty specky port and it's no fun at all. The Amiga version is worth a look though just for some rather nice cartoon graphics. Zub is a classic up to jump game from the Pickford Brothers. It's better on the Spectrum because the CPC version has smaller hover pads. But aside from that, it's a classic game and really good value for budget. Halfway through now, and if you like this kind of thing, you can check out Chinavision on Patreon, link below. And please also consider subscribing to this channel for weekly videos. And also please click on the notification bell. Don't you open that trapdoor, you're a fool if you dare. It's a gorgeous Don Priestley game with logical puzzles to complete. If you know the TV series, you'll get straight off no problem. It's superb stuff in the pinnacle of Don Priestley's art. Ghostbusters 2 is a great multi-level game in the ocean style, but this is in fact Activision. Overseen by the Oliver Twins, it captures key scenes from the film. Levels 1 and 2 look great on the Amstrad and there's an enormous amount of polish, but then you hit level 3. Chucky Egg is one of the classic 8-bit platformers. While the Amstrad version isn't as good as the BBC, it's still a very playable port. If I say tower climbing games, then you're going to think nebulous and you'd be right. This is a great game across all the 8 bits. It's unusual for Houston and this era not to give the CPC a specky port. Roland is to Amstrad owners what Horace is to Spectrum owners. Okay, so this game is jet set really, but it's tuned to the CPC. Tackle the time zones in any order you want and travel between them in your police telephone box. I'm guessing BBC Enterprise has never spotted that. Elevator Action is an underrated platform game that sees you use lifts and escalators to travel between platforms. It's polished and great fun. Power Drift has massive sprite scaling in the arcade and that will never translate well to the home systems, but the CPC port is a good racer in its own right. Turbo Esprit, or as it's known to Amstrad owners, Grand Theft Auto CPC. The Amstrad version of Smash TV lacks a two-player option and it misses out on the third level, but the game still manages to be good fun. Amsoft 3D Boxing is a rare example of a boxing game on the CPC. It's an interesting diversion. Feud is arguably the Pickford Brothers' finest moment. Battle against your brother, I wonder where they got the idea for that from, by collecting ingredients and casting spells. But be warned, the computer may hand you your backside. And the CPC, yeah, it's the best version. Rick Dangerous 2 is heralded as a classic. However, I regard it as a rather unfair memory test where you die over and over and over again. But hey, lovely graphics. Robocop is probably the best of the ocean movie conversions, certainly on the Amstrad and the Spectrum. It nails the feel of the movie and every level is fun. And there's great sampled speech for 128k owners as well. Star Wars Chess 2 is a great chess game by Amsoft for the CPC. It has a slower but very attractive 3D mode and a very fast 2D mode, and has loads and loads of options for hardcore chess players. All you can say about Salamander is it's far better than the CPC port of Nemesis, but then again, so is a punch in the face. Sable Wolf looks nice on the CPC, but it lacks some of the gameplay elements of the original specy version, such as the Guardians travelling between the screens. That said, it's still better than the C64 and BBC versions. Titus the Fox is a console-style platform game from French software house Titus. The rather unusual scrolling gets some getting used to, but aside from that it shows what the CPC can really do. If you're disappointed by Salamander and Nemesis on the CPC, then check out Zynaps. Houston really nailed the Japanese-style shoot-em-up with this superb conversion. Afterburner lacks the thrills and spills of the arcade, looks nice as a static screen, but when you come to play it, it all feels slightly detached. 
Source Week Plus was originally a CPC exclusive title, a disc only enhanced version of the game that blows the other systems out of the water and even beats the later Amiga port. As is well documented, check out the Stuart Ashens book, I think Rick the Roadie is one of the worst games I've ever purchased. It's broken, no fun, short and dull, dull, dull. It's not even ironically bad, it's total rubbish. Thanks to the CPC's superb palette, Clax is a game that loses very little from the arcade original and retains much of its feel. G-Lock suffers the same problem as Afterburner but at least feels slightly less detached, but it's still very little fun compared to the arcade, unless you get your mate to hold you upside down that is. Connolly is a bunch of arcade resource game from Mastertronic. For just $1.99 you fend off the aliens and grow mushrooms the cash. It's surprisingly addictive and the CPC has the best version. Phew! Well, can't get closer than that. No time left at all. But that was 50 Amstrad CPC games reviewed in exactly 10 minutes. Okay, there was a break in the middle. We're going to plug the Patreon and subscribe stuff at some point, don't you? Thanks for watching. We're going to try and do more of this stuff soon. And remember, Chini Vision is out every Thursday night, UK time, either reviewing games on original hardware such as the Amstrad CPC, Sinclair Spectrum, Amiga, BBC, Commodore 64, and so on, or actually using the real hardware and using peripherals or reviewing the hardware itself. So join us every Thursday night. Thanks for watching.